Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all of you regardless of which part of the world you are tuning in from. I'm very excited and grateful to welcome you to yet another promising session of the Extra in Speed Live. First of all, I would like to um, apologize for coming in very late. I had to attend to uh, my, ch my, my daughters are having their graduation today, so I had to go to their school to see them perform and do some um, little pleasantries before I come on here this morning. So um, it took me quite a while, and thank goodness I'm here right now, and thank you for holding me until I come in. So thank you very much for staying around. And um, before we kickstart the session, I would like to confirm that we are good to go this morning. So if you can see my screen and you can hear my voice clearly, please type in hi in the comment section as this will give me a positive feedback that we are good to go this morning. So I would like to see some feedback, please, in the comment section. So I'm trying to load up my comment box right now and I want to see some comments flooding in as we get the session started. Okay, um, I see. Uh, okay, thank you, Carrie, for holding in for me. Um, thank you very much. I can see um, Nikki74. All right, thank you very much for that um, confirmation. So I also saw 2507, um, 8818, and um, 380. All right, everyone, thank you very much for that confirmation. So I will take this as a positive feedback that we are good to go this morning. My name is Sharif Daramola, and as usual, we shall be um, um, going through the market structure from a price action-based technical perspective. Uh, we shall be diving into a site phone analysis of the assets on our watch list for this week, which are the gold spot, the US all spot, AXAU USD, and of course the GBP USD. So we shall be exploring the recent movement and chart patterns to uncover key insights that can potentially trade shape our trading decisions ahead of the um, New York session today. In fact, in preparation for today, remember today is a very, very high, a very, very important day as we anticipate that anticipate some major events coming in from the U.S. economic docket. And in preparation to this, I have conducted a comprehensive analysis utilizing simple but powerful setups that we will be our compass through um, the market structure. Of course, we shall be unnessing the power of trend lines, key levels, and chart patterns to gain valuable insight into the historical price movement of all of the assets on our watch list. And for those who are joining us for the first time, you are highly welcome on board. And what we simply do here um, is to come together as a community gathering in anticipation of the New York trading session. During this time, we always review and manage our current positions while also aiming to position ourselves strategically for the day's trading session. So it happens on a daily basis, 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time. And um, it might look a little bit overwhelming at first since this is your first time being exposed to our style of trading here. But trust me, these are very simple analysis which can easily be digested and practically utilized on your own on, by your own self. So the more time you spend with us, the better you become in eventually using the information you will be gathering here to make your independent trading decision. So once again, I welcome you on board. So with that being said, now let's dive right into the business for today. And as usual, you know, the first thing we normally do is to check on the con economic calendar to keep tabs with the fundamental events, especially for the day we are going into. And you know how important these fundamental factors are as they often manifest on the chart in technical patterns and price movement. And by monitoring the economic calendar, we can easily identify potential correlations between key economic releases and, of course, 
specific technical patterns. And by knowing when these events are going to be happening, we can easily um, position ourselves in such a way that we can catch any potential move uh, prior, during, and even after the event. So for today, um, July 26th, that is Wednesday, we have um, three high impact event coming in from the U.S. economic docket. And the major one which everyone in the market is looking forward to is the Fed interest rate decision. So this is um, um, uh, a rate a rate hike tends to boost the U.S. dollar, of course, as it's understood that is a sign of LD inflation. And a rate cut, on the other hand, is, a seen, is seen as a sign of economic and inflationary wars. So um, we have the previous data coming in here at 5.25, and there is a consensus of another 25 basis point rate hike for today. So we are going to be looking forward to what the actual data is going to be. Will it be just as expected? below expectation or even come in just as expected. Then we also have the Fed monetary policy statement, which will also be coming up in about, um, I think, I'm on hours from now, I think about um, seven hours from now. Um, this is another event that majority in the market will be looking forward to. It's a statement regarding monetary policy, which of course everyone wants to see and know um, what the economic, the monetary policy is like in the U.S. Then we have the FOMC press conference, which is um, considered to be a conference to um, to questions, open to press questions, where the Fed chairman will be um, give answering questions from um, journalists. And of course, whatever he says here will give, be an indicator into how to position ourselves ahead of um, the um, nearest future. So with that being said here, um, we all agree now that we have high impact event coming in for today. And in fact, we want to be going into the chat now to look at things from a technical standpoint to understand and decipher how market participants are going to be anticipating this event. And of course, the anticipation of this event will reflect on the chart as price action. So now going right into the chart right now, the first instrument we are going to be taking for today, of course, is the U.S. All Spot. Now on the U.S. All Spot, we have been buying this instrument since the beginning of the week. And in fact, we have been very, very profitable on this commodity. Now look at what happened. Let's run through how the week started for us on the U.S. All Spot. So at the beginning of the week, we um, acknowledged that price action um, was in a range, was range bound, as we saw price confined within the $77 level and of course the $76.50 level to give us an insight into the level of indecision at that particular point in time. And coupled with the fact that price action has been on a very strong bullish momentum prior to the beginning of the week, um, there was a high tendency of price action breaking out of that resistant line. And you know how we do it in this community. When price action falls into a range such as this one we have here, we always remain patient waiting for either a breakout of the resistant level to happen how the breakdown of the support line to happen before we want to be opening any position on that current asset. Now, with our orders placed at both ends, we had our buy stop order triggered as soon as price action broke out of the $77 area. And this happened prior to our live session on Monday. And I told us all that for those who missed out on this opportunity, let's wait for the retest of the $77.20 level where we shall be capitalizing on that retest to join a potential uptrend continuation. And that was exactly what happened. As you will see here, we saw the breakout retest of structure to incite that uptrend con continuation. And since that moment, price action had continued to find higher highs and higher lows in this particular market. Now, yesterday's trading session, remember we also acknowledge a range here where price action was caught within the $79 level and of course the $78.50 area, giving us another flat channel to work with. And I told you yesterday that we are going to be anticipating the breakout of that structure 
to add more position to our existing trade, which of course happened with surprise action moved. And if you had moved your stop losses accordingly by now, you must have been taken out on all the buy positions in the market right now. So currently, I do not have any buy positions running at this point in time. And if you still have a buy position running, I will be imploring that you move all stop losses to secure this current position. You could make it somewhere around the $78.50 level just to secure this position in case price action will be going to the downside. We might likely be seeing some profit-taking activities ahead of the Fed's announcement. Now, with a well-secured position at this point in time, what is going to be our plans as we get prepared for today's trading session? Well, the first thing I would like us to do here on the US All Sports assets is for us to scale up into the higher time frame so that we can have an holistic view of what is really going on in this market. And if we also take into consideration the fundamental aspect of this market, considering the fact that the, U the OPEX Plus members have been for months now trying to artificially increase the demand for oil by cutting oil production at every meeting they have been having since the beginning of this year. And of course, it, it seems that things are already yielding in their favor as they have a target of $80, barrel, uh, $80, $80 per barrel. But at this point, price action is currently running around the $79-ish, which is a, it's about $1 shy of that $80 mark. Will price action ever get to that level? Or are we going to be seeing um, fear take over the market leading into profit-taking activity, um, leading into a crash in oil prices? Well, let's take a look at the higher time frame to have an holistic point of what is going on. And let's see if we can identify technical structures that we are going to be using to guide our trading activities for today. Now, scaling up into the higher time frame, I remember I would like to refresh our memories as regards to what we were able to spot here at the beginning of the week. Now, the first thing we did here at the beginning of the week was to take into consideration the nature of price action since um, the beginning of this month. And in fact, we were able to connect the series of um, higher lows and of course, higher highs to give us an ascending channel to work with. And this further emphasized the strength of the bias at this particular point in time as price action had consistently and uniformly found higher highs and higher lows. Now, um, in addition to these trend lines we have here, remember we identified a couple of levels, um, one at the $77.20 area, which was uh, a strong selling niche um, during last week's trading session. We saw how um, sellers came in to negate all bullish attempts around this area, making it difficult for price to break out of that structure. Then we also had the support line here, which also has been a major determinant of buying pressure in this market. Now, prior to the um, beginning of this week, we had a situation here where price action was consolidating, and we agreed that we're going to remain patient to see if price action will really break out of that resistant line to give us an opportunity to join an uptrend continuation or we might likely be seeing continued selling pressure to incite a sell-off maybe into the $75 level or the ascended trend line to incite another wave. But it appears that the consolidation phase we saw at the beginning of the week turned out to be a trend continuation pattern which helped us to position ourselves for that uptrend continuation. Now, with the situation we have here, things are becoming a little bit more interesting. As you will see, um, the highest point price action has gotten to right now is the $79.70 area. Let me call it $79.80 area. Let's round that off so that we can have a round figure. So we have the $79.80 80 cent level let's mark this level out on our chart right now and as soon as price tested that area we've been seeing some selling pressure trying to bring price to the downside now from a technical standpoint 
if we look at this current market structure and considering the impulsive move that broke out of that $77.20 level, we should be expecting from a technical standpoint that price action may at some point in time incite a retracement move that will incite price to retest the $77.20 level, probably to incite another wave of bullish momentum if buy pressure is identified around that zone. Now, one interesting thing about this $77.20 level here is that it also shares a confluence with that ascending trend line we identified earlier, making this area a beautiful confluence to look out for trading opportunities if price action ever drops into that structure. Now, there are two ways to trade this market setup. That is, if we do have a reversal pattern and the way things are looking right now, we might likely be seeing a, a head and shoulder pattern. Let me show you what I'm trying to see here. What is likely going to be evolved, price action might evolve into like this, like the right shoulder, left shoulder, the head, and then price appears to be going through the a potential transition into the right shoulder where we could have our neckline situated along the $78.50 level where we shall be looking forward to the breakdown to insight that um, um, reversal to confirm that reversal pattern. So let's identify that level. So we might likely be seeing a reversal pattern around that area. Now, if this happens, that price breaks down the neckline and drop into the structure, then definitely we want to remain patient and wait and see how the market will be reacting to both the $77.20 level and of course the ascending trend line to decide if we are going to be buying or going to be selling if the breakdown retest of that structure happens. So this is a very simple setup we want to take note of while we continue to monitor price action on this current market structure. So right now, our price action is currently trading around the $78.50 level, which may likely be the neckline of that reversal pattern we're projecting here. Now, if price breaks down and retest, I'm not selling, but if you are a counter trend trader or a scalper and you feel comfortable taking counter trend opportunities, uh, then you might want to be able to take advantage of the breakdown retest of structure into this area where you want to be um, anticipating a, a 120 pips move minimum if price action reverses from that area. And if it breaks down, then um, we could have as much as 300 pips if price action continues to drop to the downside. But personally, I'm not going to be doing that as I will be waiting to see where the retracement phase will culminate before I want to be joining another wave of bullish momentum. So I'm hoping that price, if drops into this area, we want to be looking out for reversal patterns to join um, an uptrend continuation around here. But if price drops below the ascending trend line and breaks down that structure, then we will have no other choice than to look out for selling opportunities at the retest of that structure when it is broken. So these are my views here on the four hours time frame. But when we scale down into the lower time frame, uh, let me allow this to um, reveal itself on our lower time frame. So right now we are at a critical point in the market right now where price action uh, appears to be finding support along that area. So let me show you what I was able to Okay, we already have a level here. So let me go back into the four hours time frame and let's remove this one. So I will just make this show only on this one since we already have um, a level alighted on the four hours time frame. Okay, so here we go. Now, going back into the one hour time frame while trying to make things a little bit more easier for us to be able to capture any potential move at this juncture of the market. I was able to identify a couple of levels and, of course, trend lines that we are going to be using to guide our trading activities for today. Now, while trying to do this, I was able to spot an ascending trend line after connecting the series of higher lows. Look at what has been going on here since Thursday of last week trading session. So we have higher lows connected, giving us a beautiful ascending trend line that we are going to be using to guide our trading activities 
for today. Let me readjust this trend line a little bit to capture. Hold on a second. I think I'll have to readjust this trend lines. Uh, okay. I think we have to readjust the trend lines. So I'll give this a different color so that it would. So we are deleting this one right now. So readjust the trend line now. So you want to mark this trend line on your chart as you will definitely be needing it to guide your trading activity for today. Now, what this simply means is that since we have an ascending trend line, as long as price action remains above that ascending trend line, uh, we have no other choice than to continue to look out for buying opportunity and feel comfortable in our buy position. So right now, if we zoom into the current structure at this point, you will see where price action is at at this area. Price is at a level that has, has, has a memory for buying power in the past, since in the last um, uh, 24, 36 hours now. Look at, is it 48 hours, I think? Look at what happened here on Monday when price broke out. We had a breakout retest of structure giving us signs that buyers are present around that area. And during yesterday's trading session, we saw something like a double bottom structure here, giving us further emphasis on the strength of the buyers around that area. Now, price action is back into that structure. And in the last couple of hours, we have been noticing the appearance of buy pressure around that area. And one interesting thing about this level is the fact that it also shares a confluence with that ascending trend line. Now, the question going into today's trading session is, will price respect the trend line where the appearance of buy pressure again, it could come in the form of any of our reversal patterns to incite another wave of bullish momentum. And if that happens, we want to be part of another bullish move. So for those who are already in a buy position, hope you've moved your stop loss. And if you have done that, another reversal pattern here will welcome more opportunities to buy the US all spot. And if price action goes on to break out of the $78.70 level, I definitely want to be adding more position to my existing trade. However, if the situation here turns the other way and price action breaks down the $78.50 level, then at this point in time, we will be looking at a potential momentum shift. And in fact, a breakdown of the $78.50 level would have also broken down this ascending trend line, which will of course be the first time price action will be breaking down the ascending trend line in the last four to five days. And if this happens, we definitely want to be getting ready to sell. And if we are selling, like I told you, this is a counter trend opportunity. And for those who are not comfortable taking counter trend trades, I would advise you to stay clear of this one. While we wait for price action to get into this major trend line that we identified on the daily time frame, on the four hours time frame, which also shares a confluence with a $77.20 level to see how the market will react to that area before making any informed decision. So for counter trend traders, you can take advantage of the breakdown retest of structure into the zone where the appearance of buy pressure above the 7720 will welcome buying opportunities and a breakdown will welcome se more selling opportunities. So those who took advantage here will be looking forward to adding more position if price action breaks down and retest the $77.20 level. So these are my views here on the US all spot for today. Very simple setup. Mark these levels out on your chart and you want to be using them as a reference point to guide your trading activities for today. So if you have any questions whatsoever as regards to what I just discussed here, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to see if there are any questions whatsoever before we move on to the next instrument.
All right. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page here. So we shall be moving right into the next instrument on our watch list for today. So the next instrument on our watch list for today is the US Tech 100. And in fact, since the beginning of this week, we have been buying this um, instrument as we took advantage of a buy position after the breakout of that um, 15,450 right here yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yes, yesterday morning. We took advantage of this buy position and since then we have been buying that move all the way to the upside. And remember I shared during our live session yesterday that we have a couple of other key levels that we are going to be using to maximize the potential of this move such as the 15,480 and of course the 15,510. And in fact since the breakout of that 15,450 here yesterday we have seen price move over um, how many pips is that over 170 pips in our favor before this bearish momentum began and for those who took advantage of this opportunity well done to you for being on standby to have caught this move and uh, i hope you moved your stop losses accordingly as you all know um how we do it in this community as soon as price action moves significantly well in our favor we definitely want to be locking in and securing that position and i hope you did so and if you had done that you must have been taken out with it modest size of profit or at a worst case scenario break even so congrats to everyone who has been part of this profitable journey so now that we are going into the new york session today what is going to be our plans and how do we intend to manage this current position now before we go into the details here i would like us to quickly run through the higher time frame as uh, it's very important we have an holistic perspective into what is really going on in this particular market and considering the fact that today is a major event day the interest rate decision which of course may will have a a, a major influence in this market and of course with the way things are going participants will of course be looking forward to what the data is going to be like for today and we have been seeing the reflection of this anticipation on the chart as price action now let's go into the four hours time frame and let's see what is really going on on the four hours time frame and at the same time let's refresh our memories as regards to what we saw here at the beginning of the week now if you look at the structure closely uh what i did here though it has been very bullish since the beginning of this year but what I did here on the US Tech 100 was to consider the nature of price action since the month of May. And in fact, it is quite clear here that price action has been very, very bullish. And to further emphasize this trend of the buyers here, we have a couple of trend lines. Remember, we have this major trend line, the thick one, thick blue dotted line on your screen. Then we also have the second one after we saw the deviation from that major trend line during the second week of the month of may and in fact this deviation deviated trend line has been the determinant of this bullish momentum ever since that deviation happened and in the last couple of days now let me zoom right into that structure we noticed our multiple rejection emerged from the zone to give us the potential that price action is likely going to be respecting that ascending trend line one more time to incite another wave of bullish momentum but the, with the way things are going on here in the last um, 24 hours things are looking very um, bearish in nature so if we zoom into the structure right now and look at what happened during the later part of the new york session yesterday you will see the nature of these candles it's more like a sharp rejection of that 15,600 zone giving us a clue that sellers are coming in at that point probably to negate the bullish attempt and if we take it further um, go to the left as well you will see how that same area has been a major major determinant of price action 
So if we connect those levels together, we can see that we have a level that we can use to guide our trading activity for today. So we have the 15,600 level. You want to mark these levels out on your charts as you will be needing them as a reference point. So I want to give this a golden color instead so that it can um, come out clear on the charts. So we have the 15,600. Now look into the past here. Let's go to as far back as um, two weeks ago. You will see how that level was a selling niche at some point in time before we saw the breakout happen. We saw price drop again. We saw the breakout here on the 17th of July. And since then, price have been trading above that area. We saw a sharp rejection. And not until last week, Thursday, we saw the significant breakdown of that structure. And since that moment, price action has been trading below the 15,600 to emphasize the strength of the sellers in this market. And coupled with what happened yesterday's trading session, uh, this is not helping matters for the bulls at all as price still rejected the 15,600 despite the strong bullish momentum we witnessed here yesterday. Now, going into the New York session today, we have the barrier for buyers at this point, which is the 15,600, making it look very difficult for any bullish momentum emerge from this area. And for us to buy the US Tech 100 for today, I would rather want to see um, price action take out all the sell positions along that 15,600 area for us to feel comfortable jumping into any buy position at this point. So for those who are profitable so far on the US Tech 100, you might want to have a buy stop order above the 15,600 to capitalize on a potential hop trend continuation. However, if you are new here, then I will suggest you hold on, wait for price to break out of the 15,600 first of all, then scale down to your lower time frame. It could be your 5, 10 or 15 minutes time frame to look out for retest of structure before joining that uptrend continuation. So for us here in this community, if we are going to be considering adding more buy position to our existing trade, uh, then I want to be looking at anything above the 15,600. And I've explained why that is. This area has been a strong selling niche since the breakdown happened last week. Now, with this information here, in as much as we are considering the potentials of buyers here, you know how we do it in this community. We cannot ignore the potentials the sellers also have from this current structure. And if we consider the continuous rejection of that zone by the sellers since last week Thursday, we might likely see price drop further to the downside. And how are we going to capture this move? How are we going to be selling this level? Now, I want to refresh our memories as regards to the ascending trend line we identified um, on the four hours time frame. Remember this trend line right here, which has been a major determinant of buy pressure since um, the last three, three, no, is it three weeks? Seven weeks now, I think. And one thing for me here is if I want to sell the US Tech 100, I would rather see price action slice through that um, ascending trend line to give us a sign that that trend line may no longer have the capacity to continue to hold on to that um, to negate that bullish that bearish attempt and if the breakdown happens then at this point we want to start considering selling now remember that we are not going to be jumping in right away as we will still need some confirmations to happen before we open a position so once the breakdown of the descending trend line happens we want to scale down into our lower time frame to look out for confirmations such as retest of structures, signs that buyers are finding it difficult to climb back above the ascending trend line, then we can join a bearish move to the downside. Now, there is a caveat to this bearish momentum. Remember, we have a key level at the 15,300. And of course, if you remember, we have an ascending trend line which um, major one which we identified earlier on the four hours time frame so if price drops into the structure we want to move our stop losses to secure the current sell position which will have happened and then wait and see how the market will be reacting to that fifteen thousand three hundred dollar level 
which of course shares a confluence with that ascending trend line. And once this happens, we want to look out for buy pressure, like reversal patterns to join an uptrend continuation. And in fact, if price breaks down, then a retest will welcome a sell-off in this market. So this is how we are going to be trading the US Tech 100 for today. So let's keep in mind um, the structures. The 15,600, very, very important. We have been noticing selling pressure since yesterday around this area, since last week, sorry, after the breakdown happens. And we have seen yesterday how buyers have been struggling to break out of that structure. And we have agreed here today that the only thing that will make us want to buy the US Tech 100 is to see price action take out all the sell positions along the 15,600 to give us an opportunity to buy. And if price remains below the 15,600, then we might be looking out for opportunities to sell at the breakdown retest of this ascending trend line. So these are my views here on the US Tech 100 for today. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to read through the comments and see if there are any questions. And you can as well use that time to mark out these levels on your chat. All right, so in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page here. So we shall be moving right into um, the next instrument on our watch list.
So the next in the next instrument on our watch list for today is the GBP USD. So I'm trying to load up my charts. Let's see what we have here. Hold on a second, please. I'm trying to switch my router now. I think I'm um, having difficulties loading up my chart right here. All right, so here we are on the GPP USD chart. So on the GPP USD, um, it has been quite a profitable trade for us in the last 24 hours. Um, let's run through how the week started for us on this um, instrument. So running through um, the beginning of this week, the first thing we observed at the beginning of the week was this flat range. Um, which led to the break, which, which led to price breaking down that support line to give us our first sell position for the week. And if you remember vividly, we had a couple of sell positions as we saw price break down here, then came back again to retest that structure, as you will see. So it broke down that area here, then it came back again to retest that structure the second time to give us another sell position. And one thing we noticed here is that uh, price moved about, I think, about 40 pips before it came back into entry point. And this continued um, for 48 hours, for the first 48 hours this week. And during our live session yesterday, we came to um, observe the continued buy pressure around that 1.282, which was uh, a concern for sellers at this point in time. And one thing we noticed here is that as soon as price got into this area, we saw how it became difficult for sellers to um, break through that structure. So we saw the first breakdown. Um, we saw the first attempt by sellers to break down, which failed. We saw the second one here on Monday. It failed. And of course, during yesterday's trading session, we saw the same thing happen around this area. Now, um, I told us all yesterday that, yeah, that if this persists, that we want to be looking out for buying opportunities above the 1.28400 level, which happens to be our key level for the week. <coughs> and you know, how we, you know how we do it in this community. If price action remains above the key level, we, of course, want to be looking out for more opportunities to buy or looking out for patterns and structures that will support the idea of buying and I told us yesterday that we want to be having our stop losses wide enough that it should be anywhere below this demand zone so that we can give enough room for the volatility that is existing in this particular market and since yesterday in fact price has continued to move to the upside and remember we had levels like the 1.284 which was our first buy position we also had levels at the 1.2849 and then had the 1.28700 level. So for now, you must have a minimum of three positions running in profit at this point in time. And it's just this morning, I also added another position level to maximize the potential of this move at the 1.2900 area. Now, if you still have a buy position running right now, and for those who took advantage of this opportunity, 
well done to you for being on standby as you will have a minimum of 80 pips running in profit that if you took only the first position and if you took on this multiple entries the second one is running with about 70 that's a total of 150 and the third position is currently running with about 50 pips so you should have approximately 200 pips running in profit at this point in time so once again well done to everyone who has been part of this profitable journey now going into today's trading session while i was trying to decipher what could happen ahead of the fed's announcement today i was able to spot another level had the 1.2900 area another psychological area which was initially been rejected by the sellers at some point we saw this happened during the later part of the new york session yesterday before the final breakout of the structure happened triggering another position for me now for those who had missed out on this opportunity well i would advise you to remain patient at this juncture as you all know from a technical standpoint that when price breaks out of a key structure such as the 1.29 we have here there is a likelihood that price could still come back and retest that structure with the anticipation of an uptrend continuation so if this if you had missed out on this opportunity let's wait and see if the market will present new structures for us to be part of that trend continuation to the upside so we are going to be looking forward to a retest of the structure to capitalize on that uptrend continuation now if price action does not go that far that is price does not retest the 1.29 or and continue to climb higher highs then we are going to be looking out for um uptrend um uh, trend continuation patterns we could look out for something like a consolidation phase around this area it could come in the form of a bullish rectangle a pennant or a flag pattern we have the breakout of the resistant line will welcome more buying opportunities so we want to keep all these possibilities in mind while we continue to monitor price action here so uh these are my views here i still remain bullish on this one now the only thing that will make me want to consider selling the GDP USD today is for price action to break down the 1.2900 level and I begin to see that buyers are finding it difficult to climb back above the 1.29 then I want to consider selling the GDP USD so if this does not happen we are going to remain bullish on the GDP USD so these are my views here on this asset if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to let me know in the comment section so I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to see if there are any questions before we move on to the last instrument for today. I see a couple of comments here in fact a handful of comments um problem destroyer good morning um bedana Dero, good morning to you three three eight one five um four zero eight no is seven six um five seven five six says i do not see i'm not sure what you mean uh please um refresh your statement so that we can understand what you mean by that then three four zero eight good morning four five one three five one zero four two seven nine nine i see you all thank you for checking in on us and glad to have you guys around so um with that being said here i think there are no questions so in the absence of none um we shall be moving right into the last instrument for today sky bond i see you <laughs> all right So the last instrument on our watch list for today is the XAU USD, and uh, this is my favorite commodity. By now you should know. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> um, on the XAU USD, we finally saw a bullish traction began yesterday. Remember, the first um, two days of the week it was 
um, more of um, an indecisive phase as participants were not sure of where price action will go and the anticipation of the interest rate decision was not helping matters as we had at the point we had a buy position at the point we also had a sell position but we have parameters that we were using to guide our moves so let's run through how the week started for us here now at the beginning of the week we saw a flat range where price was confined between the 1962 ish and the 1958 level so we had a flat channel to work with and i told you on monday that i had a buy position triggered when price broke out of that resistant line but unfortunately for the buyers we were taken out at break even when price when sellers came in to take us out of that position and right there on monday i was telling us here that we are not going to consider selling as long as price action remain above this 1960 1958 area and i told us all that the only condition that will make us want to sell the x in usd is for price to break down that demand zone and i said not only breaking down that demand zone that we are going to wait for a retest of structure which of course we saw potentials of sellers coming in here yesterday and remember we had our sell window identified around this area where we said a breakdown of the 1960 will welcome a selling opportunity now look at what happened here price action did break down the key level at the 1960 to trigger a sell position and in fact we saw price move about 80 90 pips in our favor before this bullish momentum began and i do hope you moved your stop loss like i always say here in this community as soon as price action moves significantly well in our favor we of course want to be moving our stop losses to secure that position and if you had done that you must have been taken out in a modest size of profit or at a worst case scenario break even now remember what we said here yesterday as a as in preparation for any bullish expectation in this market and one of the parameters we said we were going to be using to guide our bullish momentum was this descending trend line we have here so we had a descending trend line figured out after connecting the series of lower highs and coupled with the descending trend line was that um, resistant level that was the resistant level at the beginning of the week um, at the $1,962.50 level which of course shares a confluence with that descending trend line and we said here yesterday that if price action at any point in time breaks out of that trend line then we want to be getting ready to buy and one of the things we said here yesterday is that we are going to be looking out for confirmations before we jump into any buy position here <clears throat> and the confirmation we said we are going to be looking for will look like a breakout retest of the structure then we can join that bullish move which was exactly what happened following price action taking us out of that sell position now we had the breakout retest of the trend line and of course the 1962 ish to trigger our buy position and for those who took advantage of this opportunity well done to you for being on standby to catch that move and remember yesterday i told us all that we are going to be maximizing the potential of this bullish move if price action ever breaks out of the 1968 level and that is exactly what happened too as well and if you're still in the buy position right now you will currently be running with about 92 pips on the first position while the second position will be running with about 38 pips in profit so we have over 100 pips running in profit on the xau usd well done to everyone who has been part of this profitable journey right here and if you still have a buy position running you know how we do it in this community the next thing we want to be doing right now is to move our stop losses to secure this current buy position and of course while trying to secure our position we want to give enough room for price action to breathe now with the situation i have right here i'm going to be suggesting that anywhere around and below the 1968 seems most appropriate to move all stop losses on any other buy position you have right now too as we of course want to give room for price action to breed and let's see how the market will play out from this area now with a well secured position how do we intend to capitalize on this uptrend continuation is it going to be an uptrend continuation or are we going to be seeing 
um, a reversal pattern coming anytime soon to take us out of our buy positions. But first of all, I want to acknowledge this level at the 1973 area, which of course you do want to be marking this level out on your chart. Very important level we have here. And I will be sharing with you why that level is important in a moment. Let me mark this level out. So we have the 1973 level. And I want us to go to as we can go to as far back as a couple of months ago, but I want us to just zoom right into the beginning of this of this month, that is mid-month of July. We can see how this level has been a major, major determinant of price action. Initially, it was a buying niche at some point, as you will see here, before that level was broken to the downside. We saw the retest of structure confirming the strength of the sellers at this point in time. And right now, price action gradually approaches that level. So right now, we have price oscillating around that area and making this a very crucial confluence to look out for opportunities to trade. Now, depending on how market participants react to the 1973 level, it's going to be determining where price action is likely going to be going for the second half of this week. Now, with the situation we have here, I want to see a breakout retest of the structure to capitalize on an uptrend continuation. And if the sell pressure persists below the structure just like it did during the um, last day of last week's trading session, then we might likely be seeing a sell-off in this particular market. Now, before I close on the XAUUSD, for us to have a better idea of what is going on in this market and to refresh our memories on what we talked about at the beginning of the week, how we'll be scaling up into the four hours time frame. So I want us to really see how important this structure we are in right now is. Now, scaling up into the higher time frame, this is the four hours time frame you have here. And if you remember vividly at the beginning of the week, um, we were able to take into consideration the nature of price action since the beginning of this month. And one obvious fact here is that price action has been bullish. Then we took it a step further by trying to connect the series of higher lows here. And in fact, we have a couple of trend lines here which has been supporting that bullish momentum since the beginning of this month, giving us a clue of how strong the buyers are in this particular market. Now, another thing that we also saw here is that um, uh, we saw a bearish move um, a couple of last week. And as soon as price got into that trend lines, we saw buy pressure resume around that area, giving us a sign that we might likely be seeing a situation where price will be respecting the ascending trend line to incite another wave of bullish momentum. Now, to help us to be able to capture this move, we said here that we are going to be using this key level at the 1960, where if price breaks above the key level, you know how we do it in this community. When we have price trading above our key level, we want to be looking out for structures and patterns that will support the idea of buying that asset. Now, that key level has been a very important structure for us. Um, in fact, if you have been with me for the last one year now, you will see that 1,960 is really has been a major, major determinant of price action. So when price gets into that area, if sellers come in there, price will really go to the downside very, very well. And if price climbs above and buyers take over, it will go up very, very well. And look at what has happened here. Price action not only broke out of the 1,960, it also broke out of that descending trend line we identified here yesterday to give us this bullish move. And in fact, if you had only had one position, you will currently be running with over 140 pips in profit. So once again, well done, guys, for being persistent and patient enough to be on standby to capture that move. Now that we are going into the New York session today, how is how are we going to be managing this position? Will price action continue to the upside or are we going to be seeing a situation where price might come back probably to retest the 1960 in anticipation of another wave of bullish momentum or is it going to send all a wave crashing to the downside? So in order to have a better perspective, we shall be going back into the one hour time frame. I hope by now we now understand what price action is looking like 
on the higher time frame so when i talk on the one hour time frame we are, go we are going to be on the same page so we've already identified a level at the 1973 so this is where our center of focus is going to be for today now for those who are already profitable on the U on the xau usd you can afford to leverage on the profit you had made so far to test waters around the 1973 so having a buy stop order around that area seems quite reasonable then you have your stop losses anywhere around the 1970 and the $1,968.50 area, which will be dovetailing to about 35, 40 pips thereabouts. Now, if that happens, we want to be part of that move to the upside. Now, for those who are joining the XAUSD for the first time, if this is your first position on the XAUSD, then I will suggest that you remain very patient here as you don't have any leverage to to, to, to join to risk a position around that area. So you want to wait and see price uh, break out of the 1,973. Very, very important. You want to see that breakout happen. And once the breakout happens, then we can now scale down into our lower time frame, like our 5, 10, or 15 minutes time frame to look out for retest of structure where this will confirm that buyers are getting stronger. So what we want to see here is that sellers are finding it difficult to hold price below the 1,973. And of course, this would reflect on the chart as continue buy pressure around this area. Then we can be part of that bullish move. But if you're already profitable so far, you've been part of the bullish move we took advantage of at the breakout of the 1,960 and the 1,962 dollar area then you can afford to leverage on the profit you had made so far to test what is around that area, placing a buy stop order anywhere above the 1973 level. So these are my views here on the XAUSD for today. Very simple setup. Our center of focus just rallies around, revolves around the 1973 at this point. So depending on what happens here will determine what our next line of action will be. Then in addition to this level here, I want to acknowledge that price action has been bullish since the beginning of this week, hereby giving us higher lows. And of course, when we start identifying higher lows on the chart, we know what we need to do. We want to connect them so that we can use them as a yardstick to guide our trading activity. So connecting the higher lows here, I have this ascendant trend line which of course we are going to be using as well to guide our trading activity for today so price has consistently respected this ascendant trend line as you will see here is only this moment alone that happened yesterday the volatility that's caused a little breakdown of that structure which never lasted and then today as we head into the new york session the 1968 shares a confluence with our trend line so depending on how price action reacts so as long as price remains above the ascending trend line, we feel comfortable in a buy position. So even if price drops into this area, we are looking out for buying opportunities here too as well to join that bullish move to the upside. But if price breaks down the 1,968 and the ascending trend line, then at this point, we shall be considering selling um, the XAUUSD. So let's keep this in mind. Mark this level out on your chart as we shall be using this as a reference point to guide our trading activities for today. So it's a simple setup we have here. Let's mark these levels out and let's see how the price will play out um, prior to the uh, Fed's announcement for today. And on this note, I would like to call it a day. But before I do, let's see if there are any questions as regards to what we discussed today. So if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to see if there are any questions. Uh, before we draw the scene for today. Alright, alright. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we're all on the same page here. It has been a wonderful moment with you guys. And one thing I would like to buttress is that um, today is going to, the tendency of volatility coming in today is very, very high, very, very high. So um, I shared a daily tip earlier 
stick to your risk management strategy and avoid over leveraging your trades. The Fed announcement can lead to unexpected price movements and it's crucial to protect your capital. Very, very important. If you can protect your capital, you have more liquidity to live for another day. So it's very important. Move your stop losses accordingly. Uh, all buy positions or all profitable positions you have right now, secure them. Move your stop losses. Lock in the profit. We are lighted zones where I think we can move our stop losses during the session. So ensure that you move your stop losses to those levels. And let's wait and see how the market will play out. And um, let's be very patient too as well. Very, very important. Let's allow our structures and patterns to mature before we want to be jumping into any positions. Like I said, we want to look out for breakouts. Then if you already have a profitable position already, you can leverage on the buy stop order or sell stop order to take advantage of any opportunity. But if you are new to that position, um, I'm always advised that you wait for a retest of structure, giving us confirmation that price action is actually going in the direction of the breakout before you want to be jumping into any position so it's on this note i wish you all best of luck today and for those who are joining us for the first time you are highly welcome i hope you are able to gain one or two things from what we discussed today and trust me the more time you spend with us the better you will become in be using the information you have gathered here to make an independent decision so i look forward to seeing you too same time tomorrow 10 a.m utc 11 a.m west african time as we come here again to review how well um, the, the assets we've monitoring so far this week has been doing and at the same time get ready for the um, New York sessions tomorrow. So on this note, I wish you best of luck and do have a wonderful evening, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>